Hello. Hello. <laughs> okay. scores i played um cornelius cardi's graphic score um with college um oh, i'm gonna get the name of it wrong treaties treatise something like that um it's really cool um and it's like very different from the one i've done it's more like lines and like angular shapes and circles that can be played with any number of people. But I played that at Hi-Fi and I thought that was really fun and I really enjoyed it. That, and, that was like a year ago, right? Yeah, that was about a year ago. Um, and I wanted an excuse to do something fun for my final recital vlog, which was very boring to create. So I thought the best way to do it was to make a painting and call it a graphic score. <laughs> So that was the reasoning behind it. I wanted an excuse to do that. Um, and I also thought it was quite a cool idea because the graphic score kind of thing is called echolocation. Um, and the idea was that it was based around feeling like you're trapped um, in lockdown, kind of not being able to play with other musicians. So all your ideas keep going around in the circle and they're all to yourself um, and it gets quite boring when you spend that much time on your own. Um, so that's why people are recording themselves separately to kind of bring all of the musicians different like worlds of just themselves into like a cohesive piece. So yeah. That was good. Well, what I've been told is that in graphic scores, some like depends on the score, obviously, but yeah. some composers will have like, okay, so if you see this idea again, you've got to do the, your, the same interpretation of when you saw that before. So like, there are some very systematic graphic scores and yeah. some that just whatever you feel kind of thing. I think I was really, looking at the movement of or the movement of the painting or like what kind of texture there was in the painting um 
but it's a kind of weird if I've painted it I when I was painting it I was like oh and musically for me for me that would mean this so like playing yeah. it was just like well because <coughs> I'd, I'd basically already thought about it but that's what I was going off and also like how like black or like how much shading there was in the paintings um yeah that was how I was doing it what about you interesting um I'm not entirely sure I think maybe I was just looking at the colors no echo location I did try a bit hard I think um and I think that one that one actually does kind of play itself yeah more than the other three paintings that we did oh yeah yeah the other three were like I feel like I just took a general vibe yeah, <laughs> from yeah. The that's what I meant I <laughs> I think, you I, can see, I think you can see that in echo location there's like a definite like progression to the to the score because of how we all played it across like mm. the two different tracks yeah we all, it like kind of hit similar notes somehow mm. yeah well, I think that's just because it's like obviously it's in very clear blocks like yeah. we recorded it at home <laughs> Um, what microphones were I using? I was using, uh, I don't know names, a D, <laughs> I think the bass drum mic is called a D112. Yeah. Uh, I think. And the, the overhead was, uh, an Audio Technica AT 2020. Mm. And I was going into a little two-channel mixer and then into my laptop and that was it. Cool. And I was using lots of drums. <laughs> yeah. In a, in a cold garage. Yeah, full of cat piss and hedgehog poo. Yeah. Yeah, fancy. Well... I don't think that comes across in the music really, actually. No. I think, like dank, horrible garage is the vibe. Yeah. <laughs> it was the vibe during the recording process. <laughs> yeah, so we recorded it. Nobody, even even like Glenn and Fergus had we none of us knew what the other person, what the other people were playing yeah. during the recording of any of the tracks. Apart from I knew what I'd played during echo location on the synthesizer because I couldn't make myself forget. <laughs> but I didn't listen to it when I recorded the drums. But um, I couldn't do them both exactly at the same time. That would have been impossible. Yeah. Um, yeah, so for, for all of them, we just had the score and a time limit, didn't we? Yeah. Which... Well, like, yeah. Which kind of worked. Yeah. And then and then we just played to the scores for that amount of time and just put the tracks together and see what it sounded like. And basically I'd say like ninety nine percent of what you hear is exactly what we improvised. Yeah. There's there's one bit that I moved of drums that I can think of. Mm -hmm. and it was just moving it so it's at the end of the painting three mm -hmm. so the, the end of our tracks line up I think I moved it by like two seconds or something but apart from that everything is exactly as it was improvised which I think is actually really impressive and I was pretty sceptical at the time of uh, how it would work or if it would work because I like that it definitely could have gone a lot worse yeah <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't talk at all about no we didn't I do. no I don't know I think that was kind of what was exciting about it because it's yeah. like this I could be playing this and it could be shit but you know I think it's just I think it's really incredible how many bits there are that are like just to, like perfectly together 
Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Like perhaps, like in some of the tracks, like I think more stuff was cohesive than would be cohesive if I was playing in like a gig with other people in the room. Yeah, yeah. I guess there's less. I was gonna say less distraction, <laughs> but you've just kind of. I feel like when you're on your own, um, there's like nowhere to hide. Like when I'm playing with other people, sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know. I'm just gonna. Let's just let them play for a bit and I'll copy what they do in a second. <laughs> I think the other side of it as well was I was always thinking like, if I just play lots of stuff here, then it, it will sound bad. I was like imagining what you might be doing, which I think is maybe easier or makes you play more like compassionately than when you're at a gig. And you can't really hear what everybody's playing, but you can see them like moving their hands. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just yeah. be like, well, they're playing, so I should play. I actually wasn't thinking at all about what you were playing or, or what you might play. Because I, I think that was, I think I'm glad I did that because I, once I started thinking, oh, what might he be playing? It, I just would like stop playing or like, I'd just be <laughs> like, oh. I can't do this here. What if the imaginary drummer I've got in my head is doing something else? <laughs> so I just had to like plow through, just doing what I wanted. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I think I was thinking about what you were doing quite a lot. Ah, uh, see. Yeah, okay. So I recorded my things. Um, with, I emptied out my wardrobe cupboard thing, had like shelves in it, and I put like, my laptop and then like my mixer and interface there just because there was literally nowhere else in my room I could stand up and do that with my arm so all of it all of it was recorded looking into the depths of the cupboard um and I used a um DPA microphone for my violin and that went into the mixer and then I had a pedal board um, and like the pedal board went in and out of the mixer. So when you hear the violin, you're hearing like a nat the natural violin sound and the affected violin sound at the same time. Um, and for most of the recordings, I was using a um, DD6 delay pedal, which does all of the stuttering noises and all of the um, loops. And then a uh, Earthquaker bit crusher, which does all the <laughs> sounds, that sounds horrible. Um, and all of the, actually some of the really nice sounds in um, the water painting, whatever, I don't remember which number it is. Um, one. Does some of one. one. Does some of those. And a whammy, which you know does the octave woo, woo, woo stuff. Um, and then also I had a freeze pedal and a reverb pedal sometimes. So yeah, that was the setup. And in painting one, um, that's actually two tracks of improvisation. So there's I made a drain track which was completely unaltered. Like I didn't, I just played some general droning sounds and then I like improvised on top of that. No, I didn't, I didn't hear that. I improvised separately without hearing that. Um, and then I took that track and then spliced it and put it random bits places.
I think, I think like, I think it's interesting how many people are like, that's just violin. Yeah. In you know, like the, <laughs> the first, the, that painting one, the middle yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, it sounds like 10 guitars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, oh, you just need a pressure, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, the whammy, whammy is a big part. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's worth me saying what I was using, drums and cymbals. Yeah. That I had on the, in my house. Yeah. Um, oh, and I was, uh, in Echo Location, I used this. Which is... Ooh. Yeah, the love that. synthesizer, which is uh, so cute and small, and I love it. Um, <laughs> I was really like an unboxing video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to my my core vocal <laughs> unboxing video. <laughs> Please sponsor me, Korg. Um, and that was actually like one of the first times I'd ever used that synth. And I think it was like everything I knew how to do at the time. <laughs> oh, so cool. uh, to people who don't improvise, how would you describe what's going on? I think if I'm doing a graphic score, um, I try and like embed myself in the score like and experience the score through that kind of yeah through my playing rather than being like like thinking about really specific things so I try and yeah kind of embody the score a bit um and express that and I definitely try and avoid thinking too much because that off that I feel like that ruins it and if I start thinking loads um sometimes I get really self-conscious about like what I've just played mm -hmm. and just end up like a bit paralyzed so I think for me I just try and get into a kind of meditative state like within the vibe of a certain score the graphic nice code. Yeah. And by you. Oh. And perhaps like when you're not using graphic scores, what about them? I think if I'm playing with other people in like a free improvisation thing, um I really like um I actually really like being like listening to other what other people are doing and then like attaching my playing to them um which is like i guess i i prefer like having a conversation with someone rather than like pushing my ideas forward um mm. which is good i feel like i can get better at being a bit more forward but i i really like just getting involved in like the people playing i think that really helps me to enjoy it because yeah. if i if I'm just like thinking about myself, it gets a bit boring <laughs> quite quickly. <laughs> um, so for me, I think with this EP it was a bit different because it was just like, it had been so long since I'd played drums, really. It had been like six months since I'd really done anything. So like, I think I was coming, I was coming back to the instrument like really fresh and not particularly fresh in a good way but just like that's <laughs> going on and yeah. I, um i think generally when i improvise i try to think about um i don't know i don't know actually what i think about well i think i think a lot of the time if I'm improvising by myself, I'm trying to have a conversation with myself, but it's not necessarily with myself. It's about the instrument. Like I, on on the EP, I play a lot of very similar stuff, and I think it's just because that was like the the bits of the instrument that I found myself on. Mm -hmm. And 
like uh, I use like way more toms on the EP than I ever usually would use. I think it's just because I liked the kind of the way that sounded, and that's kind of what the what the drums were saying to me at the time. Um, and I think I think that I'm trying not to let my mind really tell me to do anything because I, I actually think that your mind is way slower than your your ears are. And by the time you've heard something and then tried to react to it, I think you've kind of like lost what what your bo like your body wanted you to play. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think like, especially with the EP, I think I was like taking the graphic score and like looking at it at the beginning and being like, okay, I've got three minutes to play. And this is what my like gut reaction is when I see this picture. And then just kind of whatever happens after that, kind of let, letting it happen. Um, but I think it is kind of conversational, um, playing with other people, not playing with other people. And I think it's conversation in the way that you can just as easily reply to somebody and speak to them uh, just as you would normally, but also just like being able to ignore and be like, no. <laughs> I think when I'm improvising, I like to just, yeah, the same way as in a normal conversation, you disagree with people or, you, you know, you make people laugh or you yeah. make people. I think all of those are options when improvising, even if you're improvising with yourself, like yeah. setting something up really nicely to have like a question that you can answer and then just being like, no, I'm not going to let that happen. That's true. I, I really like, I feel like the violin is an ideal instrument to make people laugh. Because it's like, literally, there's so many things you can do that just sound really stupid. Like, you can't play in tune or like, you've just done a slide. That's quite fun. But it's quite hard to not have an ego about it. <laughs> because you spend so long trying to play in tune and then you go like, and you're like, oh God. <laughs> I have not learned anything in 10 years. <laughs> I think also, like, um, I think, I think this EP is quite interesting as well, because quite a lot of what you were playing is, like, quite textual kind of stuff. Even when it's yeah. really heavy, it's, like, definitely textual more than, like, and I think a lot of it, um, when I'm improvising now, it's, I don't know when we recorded this, probably, like, six months ago now. Mm. Um, maybe four-ish. But I think just like having not played drums so long, I was like, oh, what I'm gonna play is definitely like drummy drums. Mm -hmm. I think that does kind of come across, but it's like just not textual at all. It's just like, I think quite a lot of it, especially the second painting track is like, just like, I was trying to, when I was playing, I was just imagining I was like a child who had just like discovered the drum kit. <laughs> And I think part of that was just because that's all I could kind of figure out. What what painting's that? Um, that that one. one.
yeah that's what I was doing as well that's really interesting that we both looked at that painting and were like ah, oh, that because I I just started playing and I was like I want this to sound like really I haven't played like because I actually really hadn't practiced the violin properly because I'd been practicing well properly I've been practicing like most of the contemporary stuff so I hadn't been I felt like my technique was very far behind. So I was like, well, is that really an issue? Maybe I can, like, I, I'm still, I still have the same, like, you know, musicality, if you want to call it, like, at, like that's, so that shouldn't really get in the way of how I'm feeling about my technique. So I was just like, I'll just play really badly. <laughs> but, uh, that is really interesting. <laughs> I was literally doing the same thing. I was like, yeah. I was like, I, in the, in the 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 first one, this one here, yeah. was, like I played a couple of things. I was like, oh, that's kind of like, you know, it comes across quite well in the track. But I was like, that's really like dumb. I think yeah. I did. I think I did the middle one first, and then I did yeah. this one, and then I did this one. Yeah, um, I did that. This one, this one, I got quite a lot of like stuff out of the way. Mm. I was like, it, like yeah, the, I can still play the drums. And like now I'm warmed up. And on this one, I was like definitely trying to think about um, not well, not necessarily think, but I was like, right, don't just like, don't just play super loud, I've got the whole thing. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. But then like the third one, I was just like, I want to like just like show that I've not really played. <laughs> like, I want there to be like a record of the fact that all I can do is. <laughs> yeah i'd just like to say like none of the things where i'm like um not playing in tune were purposeful they were completely like they were completely apart from the end where i was like i really want to end on a horrible note but then funnily i actually played not out of tune and i was like oh really <laughs> 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 tried that time i don't think also what i was doing in that was i was like thinking like um i think i think quite a lot about improvising and like um and obviously i do quite a lot of improvising now so I, you know i i have such a different attitude to when i started and i was trying to think about um like what i would have thought improvising was when i started yeah and it's like i'm just like playing sort of like arty farty kind of what but like actually creating nothing of any value yeah that is really uh -huh. we both did the same thing <laughs> yeah
Um, echolocation is very, for me, uh, grim and lonely and kind of cold. Not like angry or anything like that, just kind of, yeah, grim. Like if you look over a moor or something and it's like flat and grim, but kind of beautiful at the same time. Yeah. Um, what's the next one? Uh, the wave one. The wave one is calm and um, I think I was kind of finding, you know, if you're like, you're alone and you're enjoying like loneliness, but it's calm in a nice way. So that's what that painting was. And also, I guess I was kind of thinking of um, river water when I did it. So kind of like finding that calmness in nature as well. Next one. The rock. Rock. See, I I was thinking about a very beautiful rock I saw. Um, but this one I think is probably I thought this one was a really happy like kind of happy, joyful in a kind of um everything's going wrong <laughs> kind of way. But it's fun and I can have a good time. Um and yeah. Also an element of the nature again being nice mm -hmm. to look at. Um, so, and then the last one, I thought really, that was like a really dark one. It looks like oil. That's what I thought, like an oil puddle. Um, and that was, yeah, I was channeling anger and fear, I think, when I looked at that one. Um, and yeah, going to the dark side. <laughs> going to the dark side <laughs> yeah I think I think probably I'm similar I think echolocation just because of the nature of the painting I was trying to uh, it was like definitely like a st like there was a definite story there hmm. and like I'm not sure I thought it was necessarily cold I think I think we have like different attitudes to like colour as well I think I spend yeah. so much of my time looking at stuff that's like black and white that I don't, yeah. I now don't see it as like something that is like cold or gray. It's just like, yeah. I, mean, I think I infer different things from it. Um, so I think, I think I was just like trying to understand what the story of that is. And it definitely has like this kind of thing of like, oh, oh no, something bad is happening. And then kind of coming out of it towards the end. Yeah, that's well, um, like a story yeah it is it's, it's <laughs> i don't know what that meant but there's no like um there's no dragon at the end which obviously all good no. stories have a dragon at the end that would have made it better and then the yeah the, the wave one i was thinking i think i was just trying to think about like whales not the country as in the animal that's so interesting because i literally did whale sounds yeah. Not that that was intention, but... <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I was just thinking of, like, the ocean. Yeah. And, like, um, just, like, how big it is. And, like, how... Like, how something can be so big and kind of empty. And, like, how... Like, I think it is, like, calming, but also that's, like, terrifying. And there mm. is stuff that is just massive in it. And we don't yeah. know what all the stuff is. There are things that are massive. Yeah. And then I think, yeah, the rock one, I think I was thinking a lot more human. Like, trying to, you know, yeah. like how, like, a much like a dumb human I am. And especially, yeah. like, we were talking about with the drums, just like, yeah, definitely like a more personal thing. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, you're right, like, just kind of, like, being dumb, stuff going yeah. wrong. <laughs> but, like, just, like, you know, just, like, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, really rough. <laughs> and then, yeah, the last one, I think it just, it was, like, if I was going to try and paint what a panic attack looks like, <laughs> it'd probably look like that. 
it does look like oil doesn't it, it does. i yeah. think it's like i think when i was playing i was just trying to think about like what goes through my head when i get kind of stressed and about like how much different stuff is crammed into such a short amount of time mm. i think that comes across we go through so many different phases of stuff in yeah. in like two minutes yeah but it all all has that kind of like all yeah. the time which i think is there's no moment of clarity yeah. Yeah. it's all intense all the way 